you guys, Dash here at Bloom Where You're Planted. I took the Labor Day weekend off. It was so nice, just spent the time with family. When I say off, I didn't really take it off with the homestead and gardening. I did some things, but I took it off from filming because sometimes I just need to relax and be with family. So, but there were a couple things that I really wanted to get done by the 1st of September. Planting my homestead garden, I mean my fall garden. Um, but I did get a start in planning it. Let me show you. So the first step to doing my fall garden is to draw out all my beds, my garden, and you know, write down what I've already got. I got hot peppers in here, but kale's gonna go in here. So I'm gonna start seeds inside, and then um, some of these summer crops are gonna come out, and I've left room for onions here where summer things are gonna come out and onions here because we do our onions in January. I've left room for garlic here and garlic here. So collards over here on the east side of the garden like I did last year and so yeah. It all starts with a plan. So at least I've gotten that far. I still need to plant doing the Jiffy um, planting system comparison with the uh, soil block comparison. So I still have to do that, so I'm a little bit behind. I've gotta hurry and get that done. But there's one other thing that I really wanted to get done by the beginning of September. Let me show you. For those of you that don't know, raising rabbits in the South, there's something you're gonna learn. <laughs> So let me just tell you up front so you don't have to learn the hard way. In the hot summer months, the male rabbit, the buck, goes temporarily sterile. I know, I'll let that sink in for a minute if you didn't know that. So that was a surprise to us when me and my son started raising rabbits. It was like a little bomb in the middle of our business plan. <laughs> sterile. Yeah, and it takes about a month of nice cool weather, temperate climate to get that buck back into shape for fertility, for breeding. So, yeah, rabbits are a winter animal. They're not built for the south, unfortunately. They really love the cool weather and they do much better there. So we're gonna get a house guest for the month of September. <laughs> Buddy is gonna be coming inside our house with us into the air conditioning. Now I've never done this before. This will be the first year for this, so I'm gonna definitely give it a try. And I've got a cage, uh, which I got on a good deal. Um, that'll be perfect for him. Let me show you. Now when you're bringing a rabbit inside your house, it's really important to have this grate so the poop can fall down into something and your rabbit's not up in it. And it can be cleaned out quite frequently so it doesn't become a smell or a mess. But yeah, that, if I'm looking for a cage to bring a rabbit inside my house, that would be it. I don't want them down in the wood shavings and the poop um, because then they'll get unhealthy and it will be a mess. All right. So this has a pan that comes out it's got some water in it because it rained, but there we go. Okay, pan that comes out that we can put wood shavings in. Empty that out and wash it out. Believe it or not, it was not my idea to first raise rabbits. It was one of my boy's ideas. And um, he became fascinated with all things Africa one year. And he decided actually he wanted to be a missionary in Africa. And he picked the country of Kenya in particular. Um, and he was just fascinated with all things Africa. And he even got a djembe. He plays it really well. Um, he, he has, he marches to the beat of his own drum. Of course, we're you know who we're talking about. We're talking about the wild one here. <laughs> He's a good, good kid. Um, but he does march to the beat of his own drum. <laughs> so, um, when your kid is interested in something and when you homeschool, you latch on to that because that is when they're really gonna learn, when they want to learn about something. So I got them all sorts of books about Kent, the country of Kenya and Africa in general and countries in Africa. And he spoke to my friends at the community garden from Africa about what it was like growing up there. 
and in, during the research, of course, he ran into a couple things. Um, there were big society issues, which are extreme poverty and government in, instability. And so, I was pretty proud of him because his reaction was, well, I want to do something about that. I, I want to I wanna help them. If I go to be a missionary there, I want to help them have a food source that they can depend on and raising rabbits, that, that's, that's it. And I was like, uh, okay, all right. And so we got the meat rabbits and we started raising them and that's how we found out that the buck goes sterile. And a lot of climates in Africa are very similar to ours. The buck would also go sterile during the hot, dry time. So he set out uh, to find a way to solve that. <laughs> I was so proud of him. I mean, he was like 12, 10 or 12 years old. It was kind of amazing. And um, he ended up uh, entering the science fair doing an experiment on underground dens. So he built this big underground den. It, we had a rabbit in a cage and then a tunnel went through to this underground den that we dug out and put insulation on the top of and actually we put brass you know we cut sod and put on the top of and built it up it was really cool and we were taking the temperatures in there and trying to see if we could uh, lower the temperature in a den so that the buck wouldn't go sterile so and the babies would be okay in the heat the babies can't even you know don't do well so the babies would be okay the buck wouldn't go sterile so it was pretty exciting but our main main obstacle was flooding here so it was just everything filled with water that we made so we kept trying to redesign it um and then we had a big outbreak outbreak of coccidiosis which if you don't know what that is it's a parasite that's in the soil that can be really devastating to rabbits and there are different species of it that, that affect chickens there are different kinds that affect rabbits so um yeah, so we ran into that and that was heartbreaking. That was very, very difficult. Um, we had some rabbits die. We had some rabbits like screaming in agony that we had to put down. It was really, really a hard time. And we, so then, then that's the time when we kind of got out of the underground, underground den experiment. And we just decided, okay, we're just gonna have to deal with the climate that we have here. We're gonna have to deal with the conditions that we have here. So we just kind of started breeding in the winter and just taking those summer months off. But it gets pretty cold in the winter here. It can get pretty cold. So um, it was also hard on the babies being born. And so that leads me to my decision to take that buck inside for the month of September so that it'll be 30 days. I'll have him in cool weather. Then we'll breed October 1st and we should have some Halloween babies. So. It should be good. I'm excited to be trying this new way, um, yeah, to raise rabbits. So here we go. Let's get Buddy inside. I wonder what he's going to think about all our inside noises, but I promised my boys that when they played the drum and the guitar they could just take him out in the patio because they were thinking we can't play our instruments though i mean they'll freak him out so i don't know what he'll think yeah it's a little quieter now that some of the boys have gone on to school so we'll see i haven't told my husband yet that he's gonna have an extra house guest a furry one so yeah um if you're watching this during lunch hour honey when you get home there's going to be a rabbit in your house just so you know i love you too yeah when my son first started raising rabbits he came up with the idea for meat um i couldn't really conceive of killing a rabbit and eating it but that was what he wanted to do and I, I did see, I was proud of him and saw the value in it as a food source um, for someone who needed food. And we did need food at the time. <laughs> but 
to practice also as a missionary, I said, well, if you're gonna pitch this as a food source, you better know how to butcher it and you better know how to cook it. So that's why we learned. So we learned how to butcher rabbit humanely and cook it in a delicious way. So it turned out delicious and it was kind of a learning curve. Um, because rabbit can turn out really dry. <laughs> but yeah, so it's kind of amazing the the way we got into it. And so now I do raise rabbits for meat. I try to sell as many as I can because I get most of the profit from selling them. But um, then the others, we do butcher and eat for meat. Um, I thank goodness I don't, I can get attached to my breeders, but I know not to get attached to those that we are going to be eating, not to name them or anything. So, yeah. So that's kind of how we got into raising meat rabbits. But kind of an unexpected, <laughs> unexpected thing. But when your kids, you know, sometimes your kids lead you down paths that you never would have taken by yourself if it had been up to you. So, yeah. He still loves Africa, and maybe someday he'll go there. Maybe he'll even be a missionary there. You never know what the wild one will do. <laughs> so I would love to hear in the comments, what paths have you gone down that you never really expected to, but maybe it was your kid's idea or your spouse's idea, and you ended up kind of taking it over and running with it. I would love to hear. <laughs> All right, I think we're all good with food and water dishes. All we need is a rabbit. <laughs> Let's go get him. While we're out here getting Buddy, let's look at how our little baby is doing. Our little one summer baby. If you didn't hear, we had a summer baby, which isn't done here in the South, as I was saying, because of the heat. So we are calling her Hope because she's gonna go to my friend Cheyenne, who lost a lot of her rabbits. So the eyes are open. She's doing really good. Yeah, my friend Cheyenne lost a lot of her rabbits in the summer heat. Their air conditioning and their rabbitry went out. So this little one is gonna go to her and I hope, hope it is a girl. I'm not sure yet. I keep checking, but I can't tell yet. <laughs> is she sweet, you guys? She's been able to stay out here for a couple days because it got a little cooler, but today it's supposed to be hot again this week, and so we'll, we'll bring her into the air conditioning um, today. And then we bring her out in the cool of the evening after dark for her mom to feed her. Probably first thing in the morning she feeds her. I see her in here. Okay, Hope. <laughs> I'm doing good. All right, let's get Buddy. All right, Buddy. Are you ready for this change? I don't think he's ready to Come here. Buddy is my biggest, best buck. He's amazing. Um, oh, he's a little freaked out. All right, let's get him inside and get him in his cage so he can calm down. Okay. Okay, buddy, up you go. gonna be in with us for a while. What do you think? My other breeding buck is Chill. Unfortunately, he will not be inside chilling with us. I don't have enough room to take both. But Chill is a pretty young rabbit. Don't show on the camera. <laughs> so I don't think he'll have as much trouble getting his fertility back as Buddy will. So. So the first breeding on October 1st will be just Buddy and the two does and then Chill will be the next month after it's had 30 days to cool down. So I'll breed him with everybody um, the next breeding, probably um, early November. Okay, that's all about all I know today about breeding rabbits in the South. I'm so glad I've got that off my list. I've got him inside so I can move on to the next thing on my list which is getting those fall seeds planted indoors 
and then I will be working really hard to fertilize all the beds and get them all ready for fall. And picking peppers. It's pepper picking time, you guys. So, lots to do in the homestead. So fun. Bye, you guys.